However, there is another type of offender who not only inflicts emotional abuse, but... This next man, Gerald, is a sadistic sex offender. As he'll tell us, he is sexually aroused by inflicting pain. The victim he's describing is his nine-year-old stepson. After about two years of molesting my son and all the pornography that I had been buying, renting, swapping, I had gotten my hands on some bondage and discipline pornography with children involved. And uh, some of the reading that I had done and the pictures that I had seen showed total submission. Uh, forcing the children to do what I wanted and I had eventually started using some of this bondage and discipline with my own son and uh, it had escalated to the point where I was putting a large Ziploc bag over his head and taping it around his neck with black duct tape or black electrical tape and raping and molesting him at that point uh, to the point that he would turn blue pass out uh, at that point I would rip the bag off his head uh, not for fear of hurting him but because of the excitement I was extremely aroused by inflicting pain and uh, when I seen him pass out and change colors that was very arousing and heightening to me and I would rip the bag off his head and then I'd jump up on his chest and I'd masturbate in his face and, and uh, make him suck my penis while he was, you know, as he started to come back awake, while he was coughing and choking, I would rape him in the mouth. I, uh, I used the same sadistic style act of the plastic bag and the tape two, three times a week and that went on for, I'd say a little over a year. If I hadn't been arrested when I was, my stepson would be dead. I would have killed him. I had been fantasizing about killing a victim during the course of, of rape or molest. I believe it would have been maybe as short as another month or two, and I would have actually killed him if I was not arrested. That his stepson reported him repeatedly. No one believed the child. It was reported to my wife and my parents uh, probably six or seven different times uh, and there was actually one instance where I went to the police station myself to turn, my turn myself in and the police day the officer at the desk told me to go home and sleep off my drunk and I left uh, if it wasn't for the fact that they had found my landlord had found some pornographic pictures of my son in the attic of the home where we were living I would probably still be molesting as you might expect, Gerald didn't confine his sexual assaults to the home. In fact, he had a lengthy history of attacking children outside the home as well. He had molested children from ages 4 to 16, with a preference for 10 to 14-year-old boys. I've been raping and molesting for over a period of 25 years, and I have in excess of 300 victims. How did you get access to so many victims? Uh, children are on the street. Uh, I'd see a child in a store uh, standing around the, the toy displays and I would offer to buy the toy that this child would, may be looking at. When I was at home, I was a molesting monster. When I was in the community, I was more of a stalker. I would be stalking people, stalking children, looking for victims. Uh, oh, I'm the perfect individual, you know, have a good paying job, drive a nice car, dress nice, and uh, go to a lot of high-class, fancy places. Uh, 
if my wife wouldn't have sex with me when I wanted it, where I want, or how I wanted it, I would beat her up and then rape her after I'd beat her. And then I would keep him sometimes kept locked up in the house until his bruises healed up. Keep him away from school, keeping him away from his friends. Nobody around me knew what I was doing because I was completely and totally different outside of the house once I left the home. I said, my, I told myself that my stepchild, you know, because he wasn't mine, because he wasn't my biological son, other people's children that I had raped and molested, they weren't mine. They weren't my biological children. So it didn't make any difference to me. I viewed children as a piece of meat. Just, to, me, to me, children were a toy. I'd do what I wanted with and then throw it away. If a child was screaming, uh, I would tell myself that, you know, it's the child's not really hurting because I know I, I ain't all reality, I know it was hurting the child. But the only way that I could continue the act was to tell myself that I wasn't hurting the child. And, and all my lying to myself would enhance that and make it more arousing to me. And the pain, the, the aspect of inflicting pain was extremely arousing. It was something that had taken time to build up. It didn't just happen. It took time to build that up. Uh, <clears throat> and after a while, I would take and I could actually take and turn it around to the child was screaming because they wanted more. The child was screaming actually because they liked it. Uh, the child was screaming because they wanted me to continue. And it's that the person actually wants this to happen. And that's how I was turning it around. And I had told myself this so many times that I believed it. But I had no remorse for it. I didn't feel sorry for it. I was aroused to that. And the child screaming made the arousal even higher. At the time, I didn't have any feelings for anybody other than myself. I wanted me to feel good. And it didn't make a difference who hurt in the process as long as I felt good. Uh, I had. I was very apathetic. I had very little feelings for anybody. At that point in my life, I don't think I had empathy for any, anybody, uh, including myself. Uh, I'm not even sure I knew what empathy was at that point.